Time for an adult audio. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. There we go. Yeah, I was, uh, was watching a uh, police chase today on TV. Yeah. We've talked about this a couple times. We can't, uh, somehow, if, uh, now evidently the guy tried to run over some cops and then he took it on the lamb. Hmm. And all they can do is follow the guy. Right. And they're going on, uh, well, let's see. They're go- they're, when I finally left it, they were going on about almost two hours of uh, chase. Hmm. And they were just sort of uh, <clears throat> just sort of driving through the city, driving through L.A. Remember getting, when they went up your street one time and came back down? Getting on the freeway, yeah. getting off the freeway, just kind of doing that, blowing through some stop signs and stuff. Not crazy uh, hmm. weaving in and out, you know, uh, French Connection type driving, but just, uh, you know, fast and furious, I mean, Drew. Keeping it, keeping it real. Yeah, it's good. But just buzzing around. <clears throat> uh, but <clears throat> a couple hours, basically. So, uh, I don't know how it ended or when it, when it ended, but it, it was a couple hours worth of driving. And I was thinking to myself... <clears throat> you watching the whole time? I, it was on behind me in my uh, office I while see. I was working on something else. But, yeah, you can't help but glance over your shoulder. <clears throat> and I was thinking, you know, poor uh, LAPD is so uh, P-whipped by... Uh, constantly getting sued and and all this kind of stuff that now here's what policing means just sort of stand back keep a safe distance don't pressure the person you wouldn't wouldn't want them to snap but and to me when you've decided to haul ass in your minivan and not pull over and try to run over some cops uh you've you've crossed the threshold of snap do you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. you you're now officially criminal you need to be stopped right. it's not like well, we don't want to pressure the guy. He may do something rash. Yeah. It's like he's he's evading. He's on hour number three of evading the cops. He's done something rash, everybody. We, really? And here's the thing. So I'm sitting around and uh, got a couple guys in the office and we're watching it. And uh, I said, uh, you know, three years ago, I saw a guy go up my street. And uh, when you go up my street, there's really only one way you can get down my street. That's right. the way you went up my street. Right. Then went up. Uh, 25 minutes later, he came right back down the same way. Don't, don't want to park a cruiser there sideways and just sort of call his bluff a little bit? Thing ended up, you know, that was in Hollywood. Thing ended up in uh, Deep Reseda, like Chatsworth. I mean, I'm talking a couple hours later, went by the zoo, went by Travel Town, got back on the freeway, got way down on, like, Devonshire and stuff. Finally, two and a half hours later, I stopped the guy. But I, I was saying, hey, if you picked your kid up for school about 4 o'clock out in Chatsworth and this guy ran over your kid and you knew two and a half hours before he was right. trapped up in the Hollywood Hills and right. no one did anything about it, how pissed are you going to be? Ugh. I mean, isn't each mile this guy travels a you know potential for more danger? I wish I'd, I'd heard your rant earlier today. The I was at a restaurant and the mayor came up and introduced himself to me. Really? Mayor was, could mayor, have talked mayor to Han. that guy. Yeah, Mayor Han. Yeah, huh? walked up and said, "Thank you for everything." And I thought, oh, Jessica whoa. Han. <laughs> what's his name? Steve. What's uh, what's Hans? Michael Han. James. James Han. That's right. Sounds Japanese, Chinese, but listen. Oh, yeah. we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, people, are, you know, I'm ranting around the office. What about, you know, what about this? What about that? No one's saying anything. Well, the next thing you know, this guy's making his way through Silver Lake, and one of the guys has a wife and two young girls, like a three-year-old and an infant. In Silver Lake. It lives in Silver Lake, yeah. knows his wife is uh, going to pick the girl up from daycare or whatever. Oh, Next thing you know, he's, he's frantically on the phone with yeah. her because they're going down like Hyperion Street, you yeah. know, right about the time, right about the place. You know, this kind of thing. And I said, yes, this is what I'm talking about. We've been amused by this for the last hour and a half. Now the guy's heading over to your house. Yeah, it's horrible. I agree with you. Well, look, yeah. take him out. Take, I, you know, I'm not saying I'm not saying you know lean out of the side of the car with a uh, pump action shotgun and start putting rounds at it. They, you come, they come to points where the guy comes to a stop in traffic. Have a car come the other direction and stuff. You know, do something. Really, you just just two and a half hours of uh, how much chopper fuel are you guys going to use up? And I, I know the the cops' feeling is like, uh, well, look, you know, we we're 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 uh, we're uh, our, our hands are tied. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. We, 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 they are. They, we, we, we can't do anything. You know, you know who did that to them, right? Who? The legal system. I know, but listen, F you lawyers. Listen, <laughs> listen cops, start, doing, start being cops. Start doing stuff. Start ramming people. Throw some spike strips out. Get up next to someone Duke's a hazard style and run them off the road. It's fine. You, this guy literally covered hundreds of miles. He, you know, when you're just driving around for two and a half hours straight at uh, fairly high speeds through the city, you, you cover the entire city. What percentage of those guys are not on speed? Zero? I have I have no idea. The thing that was funny is the guy worked for a florist. There's the florist, like an FTD man on the back of the car. So anyway, I still don't. Uh, Anderson, you can watch the news tonight. Tell us how it turned out. Uh, they, they showed it. We just watched it. What big, happened? Big fat guy. Big fat uh, guy. He, he got out of the car and uh, ran, and then he was tackled from behind. It was, it was good looking. Oh, that's nice. Nice when a fat guy gets tackled from behind, especially a lot of ass crack usually in the air. <laughs> he was bleeding. Blood on the face. Good. That's good. But I, he did looked they, surprised. Did they say how long it went on? So it, uh, was, no, uh, it was uh, two fifteen. Brian says two hours and fifteen minutes. Like really, just through a congested urban area for two hours and fifteen minutes, just gonna let a guy just sort of would not drive go, in this circles. Would not go on in Manhattan, or even the greater New York area. Cab driver take him out in Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. And what's up with L.A. cab drivers, you pussies? You guys are the slowest goddamn cab drivers in the United States. What's up? You guys always dragging your ass. Get shaken. Just send these guys to New York for a little crash course, pardon the pun, for a couple of weeks. Let them get up to speed, pardon the pun. All right, what are we doing? Dr- mayor Han, yeah. the mayor of Los Angeles, came up to you today? In a restaurant, yeah. And what did he say? He said he introduced himself and then said, thank you for your work. I was like, I was shocked. Really? I was blown away. Wow. Yeah. Maybe he's got kids that listen to this yeah, show. I guess. All right. I thought Reardon was the mayor. That was last time. Hey, Adam. What was the last... Sam Yorty, isn't he in there? <laughs> What's that? What was the last word Drew said right before you guys went on air? I don't know. Di- the- diarrhea? Yeah. Diarrhea. Yeah, I heard him say diarrhea, too, but I... Diarrhea. I was trying to impress Adam. I put my headphones on, and I couldn't quite... I know how that, turn- that stuff turns you on. It makes you excited. You got diarrhea? It gives you a, a reason to live. What's the problem? I don't know. You eat something wrong? Mm-hmm. Probably. Hmm. You're very... You're, 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 your stomach is very delicate, Drew. I know. What is that? Yeah. Do you think you think it's just it's it's, it's all it's it's only Bad genes. what you produce, or do you think really? I think maybe you're a little high strung. Mm, you got a high strung belly. I don't think so. Uh, Chelsea. Yes. You're twenty. I'm twenty. What's up? Um, this is going to sound weird because I think I'm actually blessed, but uh, when I come, I come a lot, mm-hmm. a lot, like. And most of the time, I mean, it works out great, but except when, you know, you're in the bed and then it, you just got to sleep on top of the covers or wash the seats or something. A lot of fluid comes out. A lot. And yeah. it's not and your... I mean, like, I, I'm a big multiple orgasm person, so sometimes mm. it freaks guys out, you know, because in five minutes it's... Without your soul's coming out or... Right. And, and does fluid so... come out each time? Yeah. Wow. Each orgasm, you mean? Yes, yeah. each orgasm. Each time I come. Yeah, each time. Yeah. Wow. And it's this is, a, this is like, an extraordinary kinda talent. Like, kind of like it comes out, like kind of like when a guy comes, but... Yeah, yeah except for we, we do it once, and then uh, powdered milk comes out the second time. Right, we can't keep doing it like that, so... <laughs> right, well, that's why I feel blessed, but I just was wondering if there's <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold it's just funny when people sort of make almost sort of <laughs> biblical <laughs> references, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm feeling anyway. it because God has shed his grace on my snatch. <laughs> I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I've been blessed. People talk about blessed. They talk about when they have a healthy child and stuff, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> all uh, all uh, ten fingers uh, and toes, you know. I'm talking about uh, squirting all over the bed. Uh, all right. Just say but lucky. You're right. You're, right, you're, you're blessed. blessed. You're blessed. blessed. Oh, they are. She is. But right. Replace it with lucky. I, okay, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. There you go. All right. But I was just kind of wondering, you know, is is there anything, like, is there something going on that I could fix? or No, no, no. This, no, no. Make... Please. Why? Do... I thought you were blessed. You're Why blessed. Do you Why do you blessing? have to feel faulty for being blessed? Because except when, you know, you're ready to go to bed and you've been in the bed and then well, there's a huge puddle. Then you guys need gonna... to sort of put a towel down, accommodate, learn how to do that. Plastic sheet. Whatever. whatever. Just, put a towel down. Yeah. Do you do it? I can... What about when you're alone? Um, no, that's the thing. When I'm alone, not hardly at all. I mean, still a little bit. Right. Now, look, like... that's uh, that's you. And uh, 
I would imagine. Um, how, how did she find that skill? When did it develop? What did she think the first? Let's ask more questions. I have a million questions for her. Come on. It probably kicked in around puberty. W- when did you first have this experience? How old were you? Um, I was about seventeen or eighteen. Was it during a sexual experience, or was it by yourself? Yeah, no, it was during sex. And what did you think? Um, I kind of laughed. I thought okay. it was funny, but right. you know, and this he is was a very healthy young lady. Yeah. Healthy lady. Then once it started right. continuing, it's kind of like, okay, come on. No, no, you're fine. Right. You're blessed. You're blessed. Well, let me say something. <clears throat> It's very easy as a society to do this. People do it with my uh, profuse forehead sweating. They're like, that's healthy. That's healthy. That's healthy. It's like, yeah, I got, got great. I got I got crap dripping down my nose. No, she has a hassle she has to do it, but she's blessed. Uh, she's blessed, but I mean, I, I hey, can blessed see. If somebody has five kids and say you're blessed. That's, that's not a pain in the ass? No, but I can see that if she was, let's say she was met a new guy, been on a few dates, now it's going to be in- intimate, like they sort of give the guy a little heads up. Whatever. I'm just saying, I, I understand her feelings, but uh, you know, put a towel down and try to uh, try to live with it. Most guys would feel triumphant. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. But then they'd be laughing with their buddies about you. Oh, Melissa? forever. 44 years. <laughs> Melissa, you're 16. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, my I'm 16 and my boyfriend's 19, and we, we've been having sex for a while, and everything's great, but it seems like he can't come from oral sex and I'm like I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or I mean I've tried a bunch a lot of different things and did you ask nothing... him what the problem is yeah and he doesn't he can't really say I mean he All can right. come during sex All right. not so he's during... one of those guys he's a sick guy he's like Drew half a <laughs> fag <laughs> no problem but I no, mean, some guys are just that way. They that's just, the way he is. Yeah, that's all right. It's just, but just is like there anything, there's nothing I can do, or no, that's probably. how he is. No, that's it's all right. he's fine. He's still happy with what you do for him, but he needs the sex. But I, it's like more like I feel like I'm not doing anything right. Or Melissa, yeah. you can't you can't hear us, can you? <laughs> there's nothing you can do to change how he is. Well, okay. if you're a little better looking. Maybe, <laughs> you know, this wouldn't happen okay. with uh, you know Destiny's Child or something like that. Are you attractive, girl, Melissa? Say my uh, name, say my name. Oh, that's right. I would hope so. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he enjoys intercourse. He loves yeah. you that much. Uh huh. All right. Why? Why are you obsessing on this? It's just I don't know. <laughs> All right, stop it. Or what about? Okay, one more question. What about with me? I go through more trouble having an orgasm during sex than if it was just... And that's that's, that's very right. normal for a woman, your age especially. To have an orgasm at all at your age is already ahead of the curve. The vast majority of women your age can only orgasm during either self-stimulation or oral sex. People, please, start listening to the show, would you? Uh. Just listen to one night. That's all we ask. <laughs> a night a then week. Call. Then don't don't, call. Then don't call. Well, if you're going to call, though, have listened to one night first. Right. <laughs> Anderson, where's that Destiny's Child thing where they were singing that acapella? Say my name, say That's my enjoyable. name. When was that? When no one is around you, say baby I love you if you ain't running game. Say my name, say my name. You acting kind of shady and calling me baby while the sudden change. Say my name, say my name. When was that? That was like four years ago or something like yeah. that. Were they them then? They were partially them yeah. then. There was four of them then. Hadn't they been on the TV show? No, we ran into them at the Teen Choice Awards. Right. I, I ran into them no, at the Teen that. Choice Awards. And no, come, I saw them too. I remember that. How dare you? Listen, you got the mayor. I got Destiny's Child. <laughs> they came running up to me like schoolgirls. Uh, and they were they recognized me from uh, our t- when we were on TV. And they were like, oh, well, we want to do the show. We want to do the show. So it's fine. At the time, I, I just was watching something uh, like 2020 or something. Like Beyonce's like 21 now. So... She must have been like seventeen. They must have all been like seven, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I I do not remember her being. <laughs> I thought they were like you know twenty one, twenty two. I I couldn't tell. There's a lot of eyeshadow on them, but uh, they were really sweet. You don't you don't remember them? Yeah, I remember them being very nice. I, don't, I just don't remember crazy Beyonce. nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Came in, did their uh, did their thing. Oh yeah, I'm a big draw. Them, the Dixie Chicks, I get them all. Yeah, Dixie Chick, you got that. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, Jimmy's doing something at the Teen Choice Awards, like, in a couple of weeks. And uh, this Teen Choice Awards is a huge deal. Like, they get 
you know, Jim Carrey shows up there. They yeah. get all these big, big name yeah. celebrities, and it's a big thing. And we used to do it yeah. uh, some years back. Yeah. But I was, th- I was saying to somebody, I don't even know what the Teen Choice Awards are. I mean, the actual trophy, or what are they for? Or? Who does them? Who puts them on? Like, uh, why? Where do they get? The, why does? Why do they get a? Why do they get huge A list celebrities Fox? for a fairly Fox. new thing that doesn't really seem to exist and doesn't seem to matter to anybody? I think it's Fox. Okay, I, but, I know it's Fox. Okay, it is, but who cares? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just remember being over at Fox and an executive running up to me and saying, uh, "We we've never had such a response as to when you guys were on the first Teen Choice Awards when we were." We were announcing the sexiest scene, and they gave the clips, and we were up there with Daisy Fuentes. Yeah. And uh, Adam goes, uh, he goes, we're going to break from the script. We're going to do something memorable. And he goes, uh, so they come back from the clips. They show these sexy scenes. And Adam goes, I just have to let you all know that I've masturbated to every one of these scenes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then we went on. That was good times. Yeah. Daisy Fuentes, huge star. Huge star. Who decided she was a celebrity, by the way? Hello? Uh, Lu- Lusan? Lawson. Lawson. Say Uh-oh, Crank is this, Anchors. Is this him? Say Crank Anchors. Yeah, that's me, Crank Anchors. Yeah. Yeah. That's me, Crank Anchors. How anchor. are you? <laughs> Good. I love Crank Anchors. I love the man show. Love you, Lawson. Crank Anchors. <laughs> yeah. I love Jimmy Show. I love Jimmy Show. Love. He loves you too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Two, aren't you coming out with a new book called Crooked? Cracked. Cracked. Oh, crack. Crack. Crooked. That will be out in uh, on August 21st. Yeah. Ooh, Put your orders in now on uh, on uh, Amazon or BarnesandNoble.com. Yeah, you got to get you got to get in early. Got to make hay while the sun shines. I'm going to be I really am excited about this book. It's got I poured what my What is it about? It's about my experience taking care of drug addicts basically. Oh. But it's a lot of interesting twists in it and a lot of interesting stories. So. Uh-huh. And I heard don't you have Several books out already. I have two. Adam and I have one. Yeah, I'd like to re-release ours. Re- I re-work get, it and do I it get properly. Reading that. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know, here's what I recommend everyone do: um, write a book and then uh, don't read it. And then every time someone comes up to you and wants you to read something of theirs, I just say, "Hey, I, I haven't read my book yet," and they leave you alone. I don't. It really just makes me a retard, but it makes people leave you alone. Uh, Go ahead. What, is, what do you have what a question? Qu- yeah. What is the Dr. Drew and Adam book about? Uh, I we don't, don't know. We don't remember. Yeah. Just this show, basically. Oh. Just answering some questions. They screwed it up. The, yeah. book, the book publisher. Who published that book, Drew? I can't remember. But we, Crooks we, we, and a-holes. It, it would have been much better. The manager's an idiot. Yeah. Everyone was an idiot had to do with the book. We thing. wanted to call... Adam wanted to call the show that book, I thought, brilliantly. Uh, Adam is from Mars. Drew is from Pasadena. Oh, I did, didn't I? That would I? have been a great title. I never wanted to call it that. Well, you came up with that, around. and I thought, that's it. That's the title. And they were like, oh, no way. No. Oh, are you kidding? Yeah, they're probably right. Uh, no. Okay. No. All right. Low Sun. Uh-huh. Where what's are you, your, what's where your are ethnicity? Where are you from, yeah. Sun? Viet- Vietnam. <laughs> no, I'm from Nuevo Mexico. Oh, yeah, that's right. I keep thinking you're uh, you're somewhere eastern and you're uh, southern. Uh, well, oh, that's what you thought when I was talking to the used. Yeah, how tall are you? How tall am I? I'm like 5'6". How much do you weigh? 159.5. All right. I'm just going to round up, call you 160, all right? <laughs> okay. How do you know how much you weigh? What are you, are you a boxer or something? Uh, Well, I'm not much of anything right now. All right, but 159.5, huh? I mean, yeah. like you fart, you go down to 159, right? Yeah. All right, buddy, good times. Whew. Good sounding kid, sharp kid, good looking kid. <laughs> Crank anchor. That's him. How can this? He, he How does claims he get it's a Spanish accent, a Mexican accent, but doesn't that sound weird? It sound oh, like he's a it, Laotian it, or something. It just sounds weird. I can't quite. You can't low. It's it's a Johnny Quest character. You know? Yeah, it's but just, that's what I mean. It's sort of an East. Yeah. It's like a Vietnamese or something. Yeah. No way. All right. Well, he loves the crank anchor, so he can't be all bad. Brian? Yeah. You're 17? Yes, I am. What's up? Uh, actually, um, me and my girlfriend were fooling around tonight. Yeah. And uh, we weren't having sex. I didn't have any condoms on me. Mm-hmm. But she was, uh, she was taking my penis, and she was real. I'm just, they're you know? Mm-hmm. And, that's that's uh, a class, class move. Huh? She was rubbing her penis on... 
your penis on her clitoris. Yeah, it's a yeah, beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, what does our life come to? I don't know. What's your question? Well, uh, right before I came, I you know grabbed it. You know, some cum. But um, I think I well, actually, I know I got some cum. You know, like on her pussy. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what what are we gonna say to this? What what is what do you think our answer is gonna be? She got to go get the morning after yeah. pill. Yeah, you can either it's unlikely, take your risks, but if you want to be sure, get the morning after pill. Well, plus she basically, uh, sp you know, sprayed her like he was uh, getting leaves off a driveway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Blower, it, yeah, yeah, just. No, I'm talking about hosing it. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the old fashioned way. I see, I see, hosing yeah. down that driveway like he wasn't up in there. But he was, that's good enough. Okay. All right. And listen, everybody, if uh, you're not going to use a condom or birth control or something, you think your 17-year-old uh, your balls <laughs> can handle uh, you just rubbing that uh, penis, which has been hard since homeroom, against her uh, vagina, <laughs> nothing's, nothing's going to pop, you're, you're sorely mistaken. Yes, Drew? <laughs> yes, you're sorely. Sorely. you just you got to get that thing away from the action. Absolutely. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Just Drew and I chilling tonight. Drew, tell me, he had a nice little barbecue at his house today. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. It reminded me of something when you were talking about uh, barbecuing and uh, talking about uh, coleslaw and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'd like to. Uh, here's the problem with uh, living out, in, out, in out LA um, macaroni salad first. No. Uh, yeah, macaroni salad. Macaroni salad's good for like kids and retarded people. And if you ever want to know what uh, really stupid people or retarded people eat, just think. Just think kids. Yeah, yeah. Just think kids <laughs> or Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Just think. Uh, what would a kid eat? Mm -hmm. Grape soda and uh, deep fried fish. You know, mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Lots of stuff that's deep fried. But here's the point. <clears throat> uh, people are outsmart themselves with the coleslaw. We yeah. are, we were at, at Jimmy's eating lunch a couple of days ago, yeah. had some sandwiches and some hoity-toity coleslaw. Yeah. Everyone starts shoveling it on their plate. Ah, it's good. It's coleslaw. It's nice with a BLT. Yeah. Everyone started biting into it and had the same sort of puss on because this is the stuff that had a lot of vinegar in it. It was sort of acidic and taste. They, and they put sesame seed. Very seeds. tart yeah. sesame seed. And they, the stuff was all stringy and there were long pieces. Here's the thing. Coleslaw is supposed to be bad. Mayonnaise. It's supposed to be milky. Yeah. It's supposed to be sweet. And it's soggy. It's, it's supposed to be Look, soggy. Yeah. And don't mistake it for a salad or a vegetable. It's yeah. not good for you. It's got to taste like coleslaw. Good coleslaw is bad. That, bad coleslaw is good. Dr. Hogley, what was that? that was Dr. That? Hogley Wogley. That coleslaw yeah. was good. Yeah, listen. Colonel Sanders makes the best coleslaw because they make the worst coleslaw. <laughs> That's how you know what the best coleslaw is. Uh -huh. The worst is the best. Uh -huh. Here's the problem with L.A. Too many homos outsmarting themselves from a culinary fashion. You, you know what I mean? They're, they're going to do this. They're going to do that. They don't have barbecue sauce. They don't have coleslaw. If they do have coleslaw, oh, it's our coleslaw. We, we take arugula and we poach it. We Oh, shut up. Just make it the way people want it or don't make it. I want to standardize a few things in this city, Drew. And I, I don't believe other parts of the country suffer from what we suffer from here in L.A. Yeah, no. You realize in L.A., if nine out of ten Italian restaurants, you can't get spaghetti and meatballs, right? Because yeah. they're too cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Oh, well, we we got a poached salmon and a caper sauce We're over Tuscany. hand pressed We're Tuscany. linguine. Yeah, that's oh, give me spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> Jesus f. That's southern Italy. We're, we're northern Italy. I want spaghetti and meatballs, and I want some goddamn garlic bread. They can't. No, L.A. doesn't exist. Everyone's too smart, and buy, but it's because you can't charge eighty bucks for spaghetti and meatballs. That's why they don't have it. But it just makes me sick. In this. And there's no standard iced tea. You think you're getting regular iced tea. You're getting some kind of passion fruit with a peach. twist of lime oh, and a yeah. peach. You don't know it. They plop it on your table. You bust open a couple sweet and lows. If you pack it to sugar, you stir it up. It just tastes like, tastes like bitter death now because it was already pretty sweetened. i got to work this coleslaw. You need to talk to Mayor Hahn about coleslaw now that he's standardization. Buddy, you, you are right. I want tea. I want coal. Just, just stop screwing around with the coleslaw, you idiots. Some this make it be, you put you put like corn syrup in it you put mayonnaise in it it's milky and sweet that's how it's maybe supposed this is to how be governor davis can save his uh, administration 
Yeah. With the restaurant initiative. <laughs> no? He's now going to the Indian casinos and wanting them to chip in. Yeah, hey, they're like, you want wampum, pale face? Kiss our red ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they said, Drew. <laughs> Their attorney said that. Indian attorneys. <laughs> that, <laughs> Come walk in the door. That was crazy time. Tomahawk hits the door. Just stick. <laughs> yeah. Jessica? Yes. You're 18? Yes. What's up? Do I say it? Now? Yes, you say it now. Oh, okay. Um, I heard that spermicidal condoms don't protect against HIV, and I want to know if this is Well, true. what do you mean they don't protect? Um, I don't know. I read in Cosmopolitan that oh. they just, like, don't protect. Well, any condom protects, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's a certain amount of protection against all STDs just wearing a condom. Right. What is at question is whether adding the spermicidal agent makes things safer or not. Right, that's why I wanted and to... It probably doesn't do much, if anything. Okay. No. And it doesn't do much as a contra- as a contraceptive either. It's just sort of a just-in-case kind of move, and it's a convenient yeah. lubricant to use, so why not throw the spermicide in there? Okay. Just, in, just in case it helps. Okay. Really? The, this sort of aside thing... Uh, getting uh, rammed up the vagina just oh it never sat well with the, me. The what? The what? Spermicide. <laughs> you know, you know like sides? I think I, I just think sidle? Pesticide. Yeah, it doesn't suicidal. It Side doesn't, means kill. I, I know. I know. The, the whole sort of uh, kill part going in, going in the sex, coos. Right? Yeah. That's when, I, that's when I go for the jugular. No, I, it just, it, it always struck me as kind of weird, you yeah. know? All right. All right. I Jessica? Don't think about it. Uh-huh. You're fine. Okay. Well, you have AIDS? <laughs> no. All right. No. Where are you calling from? Ohio. Okay. Where? Like Wintersville? Wintersville. Oh, cool. All right. I'm from Summerlin. Oh, really? No. I don't know where that is. Side is killer. <clears throat> kill more to cut. Kill more to what? To cut, kill, killer. All right. That's what Killing. side is. Killing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that side, like um, matricide, you know, yeah. it's like killing your mom, right? And side all is having power to kill. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. What do they call it when you kill a kid? Like, there's like infanticide or something? Infanticide, yeah. Infanticide? Yeah. Sounds like an orange soda from Mexico, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, you want some more infanticide? <laughs> it just sounds like a bad off-brand brand, uh, <laughs> orange soda, infanticide. Chris? Oh, Drew, what did I do? Push the wrong button? Yeah, he's gone. Okay, good. Sean? Yes. You're 23? Yep. What's up? Uh, well, I take a lot of medications for, uh, you know, various things. And uh, my, my wife, you know, when she goes down on me and stuff, whatever, she swallows and she breastfeeds also. And uh, she said, you know, a couple times that it tastes like medication. Isn't that interesting? And I was just wondering, you know, if Dr. Drew could help me. Uh, the very first time we've had this question. <laughs> it's always nice when we hear something for the first time. I'm, I'm it's not the first time we've had this question. No, this, this specifically. We've had, we've had things about illicit drugs, but never about medication given therapeutically and then translating into breast milk. Really? You see what I'm saying? He yeah. swall- she swallows semen. Is it going to come out in the breast milk? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's interesting. What are the I don't medica- even know if that's what he's asking, but yeah. your, your wife's breastfeeding, right? Yes. And you're wondering if if she swallows your semen, is that going to affect what's in the breast milk? Yes, just because she she can taste the medicine taste. So oh, I just see. I mean, no, I know. I heard his question, Jack asked. Uh, he just never really asked. Uh, he, what he medicines do you want? Um, I take a lot. I take a, a Prozac, Respiridon, Zyprexa, Ativan. Yeah. It's great that you're having kids, by the way. Excuse me. Why are you having all the kids? Oh, I only had one. <laughs> all right. Why yeah. you shouldn't should you be you're you're walking a drugstore? Should you be having kids? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I I usually just uh, smoke herb really and to treat everything else. I'd rather not take the meds, but yeah, if, if herb actually were the treatment, we'd use it You'd for be that. Great, and great herb dad. will show You'd up be in great father. Herb will show up in the semen. That really? is something you can transmit through the milk. Oh, uh, boy. Thought, so you're I not going to give anything. Like you're you're not going to give no anything speed. Throughout. Speed really does it. Speed gets very highly concentrated in the yeah, semen. Well, you, you're not going to do. You go ahead. You're not on a have, stimulant. Have her suck away. You're not on Ritalin or anything like that. Oh uh, no. Okay. I don't. Why you are know, you on so many things, Sean? Uh, well, I have a just. Well, they diagnosed me with schizophrenia, but yeah. now they're trying to say it's just a obsessive compulsion mm-hmm. with, uh, you know, a little bit of ADD and manic depression. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, another question. I, well, I were, you, were you doing drugs when they made the schizophrenia diagnosis? Uh, no, I wasn't. Okay. What's yeah. the other question? Uh, my other question was just, I, I, I have a prescription for marijuana. Uh, and, um, why? For what? Well, I got it for uh, manic depression. 
Mm-hmm. No way. Yes. Really? Yeah, my doctor says I was the first one to get it for it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Marijuana makes my depression worse. You're a real Sean. pioneer. Sean, I, I've seen this. I don't know what's up with your doctor, but I've seen it get worse a lot. Well, that's, that's what he said, but uh, when I'd have delusions and stuff, I could, you know, just smoke a little bit, and instead of taking, like, a, a long-term sedative, like a Zyprexa or something, you know, it would just give me a short-term uh, temporary sedation or All right. mellow out. It's in- interesting. It works for him. Uh, uh, interesting. Yeah. All right. I don't hey, like different it, strokes, like, buddy. Okay, uh, listen. I'm humbled by that because I've never seen it work, but if it works for you, so be it. No more kids. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a union carpenter, actually. Ooh, really? Yes. I got, I got all the, you know, the mental illness under control. What do you do? What kind of work do you do? I frame houses and... Got a nail know, gun. Jesus Christ. Forms and I'm just a 70% apprentice. You know, I'm working on my journeyman status and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, living the, mm-hmm. the Mind normal if I quiz, life and... Mind if I quiz you a little bit? What's that? Can I quiz you a little bit? Quiz me. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Carpenter quiz? Yeah. What uh, what would, what R value insulation would you use on a 2 by 6 wall? What? Which what? R value insulation. R value? Yeah. Uh-oh. On a 2 by 6 wall? Yeah. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Don't know what R value is. No. That's the insulation value. You know, uh, they have R30, R19. No, I don't mess with insulation. Then we have so many different unions out here. Okay, that, what, do you, what do you work with? What, he's a with, framer. I just frame houses. Okay, so give, frame, so give him a framing question. Oh, floors. He does flooring. He does flooring? I, you know, sub, sub flooring? I, I've done sub flooring one time. One. Mostly the only thing I've done really is concrete forms. All right. All right, buddy. Well, give him a question. Yeah. A concrete forming question? Go ahead. What are form ties? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, buddy. He's got the mental illness sure. under control, huh? Drew, you know my theory about nobody calling this show knowing anything ever about anything? There it is. Proven again. He's, yep. 45 seconds ago, he was a journeyman, journey, journeyman in the union. <clears throat> All right. Huh. They call different things, different things regionally, you know? You huh. know, they call, uh, you know, like out here we might call it a trimmer, and like in the east they call it a jack stud. Oh, well, that, that explains it. That's why he was confused. Yeah, they must deform. The the Over there, they call form ties form ties. So no, they must be something else. <laughs> so it must be like form ties. Yeah. All right, buddy. <clears throat> Let's talk to uh, Whitney. Whitney. Yes. You're uh, 15. Right. What's up? Um, I've had sex several times, but my Terry has never popped, and it's never ever hurt. What do you mean? It's, what do you? How do you know? I've never bled. No, many women don't bleed. I'd say most women don't bleed. I didn't bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're 16, 17, 18 when you first have sex. Well, but, I mean, she was not. I understand that. But would you be able? To, would one be able to feel one's cherry, Drew? Mm, probably not at 15, 16. You mean you couldn't feel it if you had it? Oh, if she still had it? Yeah, if she well, still a had it. Penis would not go in if she still had it. So she could use her finger and she would know. She used a penis already. Oh, she did? Yeah. All right. Well, um, I also, when I was younger, I got a new bike. It was really big for me. And I got on it, and I slipped, and it cut up something down there, and I don't know if it could have happened then or what. could have happened then. All right. All right. But it does not... You don't have to bleed every time, every first time you have sex. That's sort of a a, a myth. Do you have... uh, you have had sex, though? Yes. Are you, ha- you have a boyfriend? Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Everything good there? Mm, very good. All right. Eight-month anniversary today. Your what month? Eight months. Eight months. Yes. That's not an anniversary. Huh? Six is an anniversary, and one year is an anniversary. Eight months. Oh. Not an anniversary. We like to count every month. <laughs> All right. That's sweet. Are you are you using any birth control? Mm, just condoms. All right. Well, Maybe. You're using them properly? Yes. Maybe you should get on some birth control now that you're just, you know, you're at the you're at the eight month plateau, so we know yeah. it's going to last forever. <laughs> and uh, and once you make it to the eight month, Drew, you're out of the woods. Ah, forever. And uh, you guys are having regular sex now, right? Yeah, once a month, pretty much. Yeah. Once a, once a month. month. Well, at least get that morning after around in case something happens with the condom. So was I telling you I saw a whole thing on like, uh, you know, I I sit around every Friday night and watch those news magazines. Yeah. And slowly drink away the pain of the week yeah and uh i just drown it in red wine uh, i uh that yeah. whole thing on the uh, hymen reconstruction uh, and how nobody can tell it's all these women from all these uh 
whacked out cultures around the world who come to like New York and San Francisco and get their hymens put back together. Very nice. And it's always like, uh, you know, they're always like, well, this is not a vanity thing. It's not an ego thing. It's just, you know, understand in their, their country they can be killed, you oh. know, by the van. But the news never makes a, ju a, a judgment call on that. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, okay, so it's a cultural thing. Well, anyway, back to the procedure. You know, yeah. it's like th there's never any, like, little sidebar where they're like, eh, in the backward, mixed-up, male-dominated, misogynistic, screwball country they're from, they might kill a woman. Which who is was, why they're uh, still married. doing these crazy procedures when they arrive here. Right. It's always, it's always just sort of skated around yeah. very tactfully. It's like, well, according to their culture, uh, this is an important operation. The reason that operation is important is because they could be killed in their country uh, because of their cultures. So we need to focus on... Saving these women by... It's like, no, we need to focus on what how they, effed up these cultures get are. To the, get the dad and go, that is nuts in your country. Why don't you just be relieved by the fact that you're here enough to live under that horrible abuse and just let your daughter be? No, no. Because you know why, Drew? You, you, you we can't, can't judge. judge. Can't judge. We can't judge. Can't judge. All good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, kill someone who's uh, hymen... Uh, Pop their cherry on their ten speed when they're fourteen. That's it. We kill them. Uh, it's uh, judge. Uh, no, 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 no. Same, same. It's all same. same. It's all no same. judge. It's all same. It's all same. Good vaginal mutilation, uh, clitoral mutilation. How it's dare all, you? It's all How same. dare you? All that. Not judging. It's all good. Oh, Every culture good. is good. It's oh. all. It's all good. It's oh, all perfect. Beautiful. It's all they're same. All beautiful. They're it's great. all same. All same. They're all same. beautiful. Except for ours. Ours, ours mar marginally <laughs> worse. Marginally no, worse. The ones that we're the man. Vaginal the vaginal mutilation culture better than ours. We we don't understand their culture. That's why we're wrong. That's right. And, and of course, <laughs> you know, we can't judge. Oh, my God. All right. For the, yeah. <laughs> Zero concept of the show beginning for Drew. Right, I want to hear the song. Shut up. <laughs> Drew's favorite. Can you give what me the whole saying? song? Can you give me the whole song, please? What are they saying, Drew? Kizzer for chizzer. Yeah. I'm kizzing in the kizzer. Drew, you, you may have just offended the whole entire black community what listening to that That's show. That's what they're saying. All right. Huh. Hey, it's huh. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. When are you going to get that crank so I can... Uh... <clears throat> Never, Drew. Right. You call my office and remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. I don't know why you don't. Drew wants me to bring in uh, the episode where he was his or for chisening, his and for chisening on Crank Yankers. It was a real funny episode, but I don't have it. I don't know. Why don't you have it? You should have taped it, buddy. I had him, Scott. Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna push this button, Scott. Yeah, you're twenty two. What's up? Yeah. What's up? How's it going? Here we go. What's up? What's up? Hey, yeah, well, um, I had a threesome with my girl and uh, my friend, her, her friend. All right. Well, is he in the middle of a drag strip? What is that? I, I, <laughs> I don't know. This uh, this comes up from time to time. I'll just uh, remind the screeners. Give a little heads up to the screeners that if we can't understand them, it's that's not going to be a good call, regardless of the provocative content. They got to have. They have to have a uh, Terry don't call me Terry. Goddamn it! They have to have a good clean uh, line. He needs your eye contact, Terry. It's my uh, headphones. I don't. I'm Brian. It seems like he's talking to somebody. So. Uh, Are you ready? Yeah. You want to try Scott again, just sure. for uh, asses and giggles? Yeah. Scott. Yes. Are you on a landline? No, I'm on my cell phone. Sorry, I know that's one of your rules, but I'm on my cell phone driving. And uh, it seems to be a lot of lot of stuff going on where you are. Well, yeah, well, got some, got some women in the back. Is there an air raid drill where you are? Is there a what? Air raid siren going off? No. Who's, on, uh, tell right? that bitch to shut up back there. Hold on a sec. Hey, lady. Hey. I'm on love line here. Go ahead. All right, thank oh, you. Oh, she's impressed. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, you had a threesome. Right. With your girlfriend and another girl. Right. Now, girl... Now, now the oh, yeah. what's that? Is that chick yapping in the background? Yeah. What? I don't understand. Where are you? I'm I'm going home. 
there's just some loud, strange, obnoxious chick in your car screaming? Yeah. You can get yes. shut up? Well, they're, 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 they're... Uh, you know what always amazes me about this show? Not only can we not find out the origins of the distraction on the other line, we can't get as far as to is to have them know what we're asking Start the segment over again. Start over. Let's no. Go. I can hear the music, though. It's good. You want to just start, start fresh? Yeah. Now, see, my, here's my problem. You know what? I'm, I'm like a... I'm like... Every one of these callers is like a painful tooth I got to play with, with my tongue. That's what I'm saying. Start over. So you won't even, like, you won't have that. No, but you, 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 where was Scott? Was he in his car? Was he heading home? He's at a bar, what do you mean, heading home? He's at a bar. My gizzer. My gizzer. <laughs> Scott. Yeah. Where are you right now? In, on my way home. In a car? Yes. Your car? Yes. Why? Why am I hearing that bitch in the background? If you're in your car, well, I I tried. She's just some friend of yours, or some? Yeah. She's a drifter you picked up. Uh, who's... No, yeah, no, not quite. She's just a friend of yours that's in your car with you. Yes, and won't shut up. You can't get her shut up when you're on a national radio well, show. It's better now, right? Yeah, it is. Now, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. well, now it's too late. Just sit on hold for uh, twenty minutes and just tell her. It's... Well, now I got to go back to Scott. No, I don't care. Who cares oh, about Scott? Jesus Christ. Mark. Hello? What's up? Hey. Hey. Um, yeah, I have a question mostly concerning Dr. Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and my girlfriend were, like, having anal sex, and, like, I pulled out, and I saw that my condom had broke. Yeah. And she thinks that she could have gotten pregnant somehow, but uh, I'm just making sure that she couldn't have gotten pregnant that way, could she? This is a bogus call. Yeah. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. We don't believe you. You don't believe me? No. No. no, no. no and way. now we really don't believe no me with you. Way. You don't believe me? They, it, yeah. Sorry, buddy. Nice try. Hey, you guys rock. Okay. All right, Thanks. Mark. Good Thank job. You. Thank you for coming clean. <laughs> yeah. That was just bogus, bogus, and more bogus. Well, it was, it was, there was no flat affect. No story. No, it was like, you know, you know, my girlfriend thinks she can get pregnant. I'm just checking with you to see if she couldn't. I was rectally <laughs> having intercourse with my significant other when the condom malfunctioned. <laughs> I pulled out. I saw a poopy penis. <laughs> she inquired whether she could get pregnant. I'm now calling you to find out your answer. And then consume mass quantities. And then it's like, yeah, we think this is bogus. How come? <laughs> Bogus does not compute. People never have a good bogus, whatever. Yeah. All right. All right. No, I'm not talking to Scott. Screw him. Chris? Yeah. You're 20? Yes. What's up? Uh, um, okay. Uh, when my girlfriend, when she gives me a head, uh, when I come, she, uh, it's just the tip, the head, the head. It's just so sensitive that it hurts. So she kind of keeps going? Yeah. Why don't you get her just to stop? Uh, I don't know. It just hit her head with like, a slipper or something. It's She'll like stop. when I'm coming, she it happens like as I'm coming. Yeah. Why don't you tell her to hold still then? That why don't you to communicate to her what you're feeling? Are you circumcised? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. Hold on a second. I think this is an all time. This is a first. Yeah. This is a first we've yeah. had on. Uh, yeah. On Loveline, we, we gotta we gotta talk to this guy a bit. Definitely, Jewish kid. <laughs> Let's do a Loveline recreation. Go ahead, Drew. Wait, who am I gonna be? You be me. Okay. So, uh, are you circumcised? Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> He like must not have, if he's blind. He must not have heard the question. Are you tall? Chris? Yeah. Are you circumcised? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. Um, so you're sensitive, and uh, that's okay. How about how about training your penis? How about uh, toughening it up a little Sandpaper bit? Sandpaper or something? Yeah, like no. when, you, when you masturbate, when you masturbate, does it no, get real? No, no. Shush up. No. Shush. Does it get sensitive after you orgasm? No, not at all. Girl, Not at it's, all. That's what the girlfriend's doing afterwards. She's continuing to, you know, do her thing. No, no, no. Yeah, should I just tell her to 
knock it off and let me come or what? Yeah, but but listen, his thing is is he said, listen, tell her to tell her to back off. Yeah. And and naturally, like any piece of decent advice that is handed out on this show, it is ignored or or stomped over immediately. <laughs> he, he's like, but it happens is when I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying. If he's getting an orgasm, if 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 he's getting a BJ, and it, midstream of orgasm, it immediately gets sensitive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wouldn't he have that when he was masturbating mid orgasm? You, you see what and I'm I saying? We'll debate this important point during commercial break. All right, we'll be back with the uh, delightful, the delightfully irreverent Chris. <laughs> Yeah. Dr. Drew's theme. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Carrie Kasem is coming in here uh, next week. She's from Big Borrow and Deal at the ESPN show. She's uh, Casey Kasem's daughter. Oh, man, that guy managed to make a couple of bucks in radio, huh? Huh. Yeah. We should talk to her. <laughs> See if we can talk to her old man. Brooke Burns is coming in here uh, next week. She's from uh, Dog Eat Dog. Dog Eat Dog is like a, a parody of a TV show that's on in the background of a movie. Right. When a TV show's on. Yeah. It's the most ridiculous TV show uh, in the world. It's just hot people getting dunked in tanks yeah. constantly. Right. But she's really one of the best looking human beings I've ever seen in my life. And uh, she's a great looking blonde who hosts the thing. And uh, apparently she's a sweetheart too. I don't know. Huh. We've uh, ever met, but she no. did Jimmy's show and she was nice, very perky. Hmm. Nothing better than a happy, good-looking person. <laughs> and then uh, Brooke, yeah, Burke, but then you immediately don't trust them. No, I trust them. Huh? I would trust her. We'll see if we trust her next week. No, but... immediately go. Hey, what's up with the? Oh, wait a minute. They made us feel too good. Mm, yeah, we. Can do they a could bit. go. They could go too far. But oh. there's a sort of there's people that were originally slated just to be nice, friendly, happy people and yeah. then turned out to be super hot. Okay. <laughs> and it didn't it didn't f them up. It didn't ruin them. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, see what my I'm saying? God, yes, I see it. Yeah. All right. All right. We didn't know all these all this talent was going to come with these looks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke Burke is going to be in here then uh after uh Brooke Burns who uh she used to do Wild On, and uh, she got a, she's on a cover of stuff. She's really uh, another uh, one of the best looking human beings in the world. So I think the other problem, than, other problem is she knows it's the problem. Parents. Yeah, it's uh, boy, <laughs> I could tell you that uh, that'd be a tough tough coin to flip there, Drew. Either 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 side it landed on, you'd be uh, you'd be you'd be going home a winner, and then for landing on tails with one of them, look out. You know what I'm saying, buddy? You know what I'm saying, right? Be careful, you might drop trow. Yeah, this close to dropping trow. <laughs> yeah, Nicole. Yeah. You're 19. Uh huh. What's up? Okay. Well, when I was about 14 or 15, I got on birth control to regulate my period, mm-hmm. and um, I was probably on it for about a year, and it didn't work for me at all. It, like uh, I got all depressed and everything. And which pill were you on? Do you know. Um, orthotricycline. Okay. And it didn't work for me at all, so I quit, and I haven't been on it since. Mm-hmm. And I'm 19 now, and I'm still a virgin, but I want to get back on birth control. And I don't want to take the pill, and I don't know what else to do because... You don't want to take the pill because it's gonna make you, it might make you feel the way you did when you were younger? Yeah. Okay. Well, all birth controls basically use the same chemical. Okay, they use estrogen and progesterone in varying mixes. A little pixie dust. And what you want to do is find a combination that doesn't give you the unpleasant side effects. There's lots yeah. of different pills, patches, pills, shots, lots of things to choose from. But whether you take them by a patch or a pill or a shot, what really matters is the combination of the estrogen and the progesterone that's in the pill. Yeah. So you might next try something that has a uniphasic, meaning it's not triphasic, like you want to try... Orthotricycline, do you say? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, what's called a triphasic pill. You want to go to a uniphasic pill that has lots of progesterone and see if that maybe works better for you. Most women get more depressed from the progesterone, but it sounds like you may get more depressed from the estrogen. Eh, good times. The estrogen also makes kind of fatigue sometimes. They got a biphasic? Yeah. You don't hear about it so well, much. Well, it's, it's a combination more than biphasic. 
Uh huh. Why bi would mean fifty fifty? Biphasic would mean it be in two phases. Uh huh. It's as opposed to a combination the entire phase. Uh huh. Triphasic is three three. phases? Yeah. So that's why you get the big bucks, Drew. Good times. Scott? Yeah, you humbled me, Adam. Um, uh, I dumped off the bitch. Yeah, good work. (laughs) Okay, so Scott's 22. Scott had a threesome with his girlfriend and a girl. Right. Now your girlfriend wants a threesome with you and a guy? (laughs) Yeah. Is Hmm. she there? Uh, No, she's not. Uh. Thank God. Yeah. How long have you two been going out? Uh, Two years. Is she pretty serious about this? Uh, what about what? Is she uh, angry about, about her or about the threesome? About the threesome. Uh, I'm, just, I'm not into it at all. I don't know. No, is she serious about doing it? How does this? this uh, as far as I know, yeah. I mean, is she serious about the relationship? Uh, apparently, I don't seem doesn't seem that way. Is she mad at you for carrying yeah. out the threesome? Uh, yeah, I turned it down. She's uh, pretty upset. No. Is she mad at you for the three? Uh, all right. <laughs> Scott's just borderline right now. That's why I asked. I wanted to ask everything, this, each possible I, I interpretation. That, so I miss that bitch in the background uh, screaming all of a sudden. I've, I've had, I've, I've, I could go out and talk to a mailbox. It would understand me better. Yeah. Okay, yeah. here's the thing. Here are the scenarios. Two. Two possibilities. One is, is his girlfriend actually just an effed up person and wants a threesome wants with out. a dude. Yeah. Uh, three scenarios. The mm-hmm. other, scenario number two is she's angry. And she's going to show you. And she's going to show you for, oh, for think, fe- feeling like the first one is kind of forced. Think, imagine, on imagine what a woman would do to a guy that she was angry at for having sex with a girl in front of her in a threesome and now you bring another guy and what she would do. Hell hath no fury like a snatched scorn. Wow. That's right. Uh, oh. Shakespeare, I think, wrote that. And, uh, Number three scenario is she's just plugging this to get you to shut up about having another threesome. It's sort of like when uh, you want to give it to a chick in the butt, and she says, how about I put a strap on on and give it to you in the butt, and then you stop talking about <laughs> giving it to her in the butt. You see what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah, yeah it's a good strategy. Now, I, p- I would put Scott back on the line and try to figure out which one of those it might be. But you know it's I would find that I think that would be impossible. Yeah. I think it's number two. You think it's number two? All right. I think she's pissed. All right. Well, Just because Scott's Scott. All right. Yeah, she's a great listener, Scott. Alex? Yeah. You're 24? Oh, what's going on? What are you? You stoned? No, I'm just a little sick, man. All right. Oh. What's the matter? I got a little cold going on. Okay. All right. What's up? Try to take some Theraflu and it ain't working, man. Anyways, my question. Uh, I've been married for about two years, and um, every time before... We have uh, sex. I always try to go down on her, mm-hmm. and it always hurts her. Ooh. So does she just not like that? Is well, she... I don't know if it's if it's that she's afraid, or she thinks it's going to hurt her, or does she have an orgasm with intercourse? Uh, she says she does. <laughs> well, oftentimes mm-hmm. women that does she have more than one? Yeah. Most women that that I have talked to that are multi-orgasmic talk to are very uncomfortable <laughs> with oral sex. They don't like it. It doesn't feel good. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Eh. Most. I didn't say all. Most. Eh. And I mean the multi multi orgasm. Not, the one that... It's not, not uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. It's just they'd rather get on with it. I think they're like you, Drew. Passionate, passionate man. Well, Drew, you don't reject oral sex. It's just you enjoy. You'd rather just have sex. Yeah, but I think that these women, it's sort of uncom- direct stimulation is uncomfortable oh, for them. So it's, uh, it's too much. Yeah. It's overwhelming. Yeah. Because their their sensitivity is that is so high yep. that they can get an orgasm through penetration. Right, Alex, interesting point. Yeah, the the thing is. So that, when you, you know, say when you say it hurts her, it's sort of that kind of hurt, like when like you I think your, it like every time thanks. it happens, it's like she's afraid and like she'll like. Uh, so I'm afraid up beca- on me. because it hurts. She she'll tense up on me. Now, like, Alex, like be, if it's Alex, before. Alex, uh, <laughs> it's because it hurts. She tenses like up. I love it when people just got yeah. this. He's got a point. Yeah, you don't want to hear it, anything but your in. interpretation. When the, your, your poor wife here is in pain, you're causing her a significant discomfort. And of course she tenses up when you come at her. And then you won't listen to her on top of that. Hey, relax. You'll be fine. You're just, you're just tense. No, it hurts. I don't push it on her or anything. Alex, like that. Alex, yeah. then stop doing it. She's not into it. Why it, do you It makes care? her, it feels like direct stimulation for some women is uncomfortable. It hurts. All right. All right, that's All good right. advice. She, well, look, 
first off, this is like her saying, uh, you know, forbidding you from taking out the garbage. <laughs> so, so be it. Best day of your life. Yeah. Uh, does she have a sister? Uh, no. No. No, no sisters. Hairless brother? Uh, probably more like, uh... Get some hair. Harry, brother. No, all right. Well, then, then, uh, that's not going to work for me, then. All right. Alex is fine. All right. Listen, you know, I love it. Here's, here's, um, here's basically what guys do. Here's what guys can't wrap their mind around. Much of I'm, anything. I'm the same way when I find out that uh, people don't like mixed nuts. <laughs> it's like, I, first first is disbelief. Yeah. Second is uh, denial. Right. No, no, there must be some kind of mistake. Third, anger. Yeah. What are you, high? Yeah. What are you doing? What do you mean? This is a slap in the face. Well, then there's rejection. I can't hang with you. Sorry, be, be gone. We gotta go separate ways. We got we got flying different parts of, flying different parts of the plane now. I'm gonna get drunk and take a swing at you. But here's what guys do. It's like I like oral. She should like oral. She's saying makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. I got to do it faster. Then it's like, why are you attacking me by not enjoying something? Look, everybody. Not, not everything's a personally uh, a personal attack directed at you. Just that's not her bag. She ain't into it. That's fine. That's fine. You just uh, give her the uh, give her the hard one. No problem. Josh. Yeah. You're 17. <laughs> give her the hard. One. The hard one. Uh, yeah. Remember the high hard one, Drew? I'm not familiar with that. Give her the high hard one. Nice. You don't remember the high hard well, one? I wasn't hard. I wasn't familiar with it. No. The high hard one used to be something you would give somebody. Oh, now good. you don't give them a high hard one anymore. I'd so like to Josh, see that make a comeback. What's going on, Josh? Um, I had a question. Um, my dad was uh, abusive to my mom, like when I was a baby. Do you give him the high hard one? Yeah. <laughs> see how that works, sir? Yeah, it but works. I don't remember any of it. Yeah. But then uh, I was wondering how that could like affect me, or if like I could be like abusive because you're always talking about how. People get abused, and then they yeah. get abusers. Now, here's the main way it affects you. You grow, you grew up with a crappy dad and a mom that was a victim. Yeah, I don't live with him anymore. How about the mom? Uh, uh, she's a lesbian. Well, there, there you go. Yeah, but so that's gonna screw you up more than anything. Yeah, so I'm not. Well, not the lesbianism, just the fact that she was a victim and may not have dealt with that specifically. Um, but it, you know, see, being around violence can leave an imprint on your biology, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to. But no, just because I don't actually remember it, but I was there. Yeah, it's not an. Ex you you don't have an explicit memory, is what you're saying. You don't have sort of an image of it, but it can still leave an imprint and an, an implicit memory in terms of how you relate to people and you know you, sort of your biological makeup. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're you, fine, Josh. Okay. Don't yeah, worry we don't, about we it, don't get a bad feeling from you. So. Yeah. I, had a, I had a thing that uh, a product Adam should come out with. It's that don't get pregnant, you jackass uh, pill. How does it work? Uh, it's just like a regular birth control pill, but like it, that's the brand name. Uh -huh. Thanks, buddy. All right. All right. I take back everything I said about it. <laughs> that's the product? <laughs> it's a birth control pill? Except it's called don't get pregnant, you jackass? And by the way, you don't call women jackasses. They're that screwball. Are. They're screwballs. Yeah, say screwball. well, guys a jackass and a screwball. Yeah, I don't know what a woman is, but I don't know why she can't jackass. Are there female jackasses? The, if they, I get a little confused no, with the you, donkey, the burrow, the mule. You would say something about jackass. taxes, and, and you're paying tax too many taxes, and yeah, there'd be, there'd be dollar signs let, all over. Let's it. keep pushing forward, Drew. Yeah. James, yeah, you're nineteen. Yeah. What's your question? Um, I was wondering why do, uh, it seems like girls in high school or younger girls under 20 about seem to like, like the bad boy image. Yeah. Yeah. This goes on into uh, the later 20s. I got bad news anyway, yeah. for you. Right. Well, they either have a lot of experiences with these guys that are miserable and learn that, that you can't turn that guy into the Tom Hanks guy. Or they keep after it, the ones that are st still needing to be with unavailable men, the ones that had destructive or alcoholic or abandoning fathers, they'll keep going for guys like that. But most of them will learn that it just doesn't work and uh, come around around age 22 to 24. What is it? Nah, uh, hold on, hold on. Okay. No? Drew, age 22? 24, yeah, I think something's no. going come around then. No. How old's uh, Tara and Call Me Tara, God damn it. 22? Yeah. This is starting to come around. No. She got a few more years. A few yeah. more years chasing a bad boy. That's why. I, I, I see the way she looks at Brian. 
<laughs> she, she, and Brian tells her, you know, look, but no, no touch. You know what I mean? And I think that drives her nutty. <laughs> Is yeah. there any reason why? Yeah. Like, there's yeah. no... Brian, Brian, have you seen Brian's... Uh, he has a custom license plate frame that says, yes, I do, but not with you. <laughs> and it drives the chicks <laughs> nutty. They're like, how can I get... I want to uh, get to know this guy better, you know? Yeah. He's got the goods. And I can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do once in a while... Uh, it, I, I swear to Christ, I was driving about a week ago, and I didn't see that bumper sticker. Like, it, there used to be more of this kind of stuff. Super foxy, but spoken for, or something like this kind of... It was like some kind of bad idea, remnant of the 80s, where chicks drove around, they had that sort of, yes, I do, but not with you kind of thing, where, like, right. I'm hot, but you can't have none. As a guy... All that makes us want to do is run you off the road and rape you <laughs> in a drainage ditch. We're not intrigued. We're not excited by it. We just think this. What a stuck-up C. I'd like to give her. I'd like to give her good vengeance, Effie. That, that's about it. Yeah. We we don't do any of that. It, it just Ooh, it turns, what is this? It turns yeah. your arousal into violence. You get angry yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not. And I think women think that we're going to be intrigued like they would be right. if we had some sort of bumper sticker Look. that said like hot. Foxy dude, sorry, lady, spoken for. You know they, that might work on you, screwballs. With us, it gets us angry. Yeah, but this is the, it speaks volumes about the single most significant issue between men and women is that women think men' brain works like theirs, right? And men, vice versa. Yes, when, they're totally different functions. Mm -hmm. But still, Brian Linton, Tara, don't call me Tara, goddamn it, know that she can't have any. Okay. She can look, but she can't touch. I think secretly drives her insane. So what's the deal, James? James, but yeah. you know what? It's it's it oversimplifies it when nice guys quote nice guys say why they only like a holes. Why can't they go out with a nice guy? It's more complicated than that. Yeah, well, it's not even that. It's like um, if the guy was in jail or he's on probation or something, and they're even more attractive. No, no, this one girl that you're into is no, not and, her. No, no, no. no not her either. No, no, like, no, no. No, she is, and because her dad was a was a criminal, and that's why she's attracted to criminals. True's wrong. Hmm. What is this one girl? Is there one girl? No, it's been like the last three girls. I three. Think. All right. Well, he's into this. Maybe, maybe it's something with me. I don't know. It is something with you. It's everything with you. Apparently. Here's the thing. You Do don't want to tell me what's wrong. I'll Code tell you. What, I'll tell you what's wrong. Yes. Do I need to be an ass? Or? No. No. He, no. Here's the it deal. It won't work. That'd be Here's backfiring thing. worse for you. Yeah. Now you're just an angry puss. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to work. It's like when uh, Richie Cunningham would try to tough it up, yeah. you know, put on a leather jacket, look like the Fonz. It never worked right. He just got dorkier. Right. right. You have to... Here's what you have to do, James. Here's what... Work on your life. Focus on James. You know what James needs to do? What? Focus on Brian. I mean, James. <laughs> James. Okay? Whatever your career is, whatever your school is, whatever your interests or hobbies are, focus, work, work out. Look as good as you can look okay. without without cutting the sleeves off everything you own and you know preening around like a like a cock and, and I mean you know I don't mean penis barnyard rooster rooster right. yeah yeah work, make your you know do your working out work on your thing try to get uh, your your car <coughs> your uh, clothes your school whatever get all that stuff straightened out and then have something you can to start offer. looking toward one have, have something to offer exactly and but something to offer is we'll give your number speech again. The not matching numbers thing. How men? Jeez, it's been like six years. Yeah, come on. Well, how'd that go, Drew? Well, that that there's a basically people are sort of intrinsically look at each other and are measuring one another. You size yeah. people up. Yeah. I mean, well, okay, this is all you do in life. All you do in life is size up situations. It's not just dating, though. It's like jobs. Yeah. There's a, a Drew. If somebody said we're going to make you Surgeon General. You'd go, wow, that's uh, that's a step up. I mean, I may be riding in the eight and a half department as far as doctors goes, but that's a nine and a half or a ten. If somebody said, uh, we want you to go out to the prison with Dr. Bruce and help him take uh, teardrop tattoos off of gangbangers, you'd be like, no, that's that's a little slide down. The thing that's interesting, though, is at a certain point in your career, going to the prison with Dr. Bruce may have been a slide up. Right. I mean, when you're fresh out of medical uh -huh. school or whatever it is, it shifts around. Right. It does this. It does this. There's cars you would have cut your uh, pinky finger uh, off to drive uh, 10 years ago that now you wouldn't you would look at beneath you or whatever. People do this with the relationship all the time. Everyone you look at. 
Every yep. time you see somebody, somebody you work with, somebody you go to school with, in my case, family members even, yes, I'm, it's broad. Sure. You look at this person and you think, would I be lucky to be with them or would they be lucky to be with me? And the problem is, as a 19-year-old guy who doesn't have a whole lot going on the plate and you're looking at some hot 19-year-old chick, you would be lucky to be with them. And guys have a, guys have a scale, a four-part scale that they use. Yep. Face. Oh, when we're looking at the women? Yeah. Face, body. Personality. Personality. No, face, body, left boob, right boob. <laughs> Those are the four. No, we had, like, we had face, face, body, personality, but the personality part was just sort of... Nice or not nice. E- e- yeah. e- are they easy to get along yeah. with or are they ease, uh, high ease. maintenance? Are they that high the maintenance? Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then after that, like, well, not in no particular. Order. Oh, yeah, in that particular. Order. And then smarts, like yes. uh, they, yeah. they. But we don't care about how much money they make, what right. kind of car they drive, right. anything like that. Whereas no. women, women look for looks, but they look for position. Well, for looks are in one category, right? There's, not and face there's no and body. face and body broken yeah. up with the women. It's, it's just if the guy's cute or he's not. Sense of humor. And they don't even know what they're assessing with that. And, and none of them have a sense of humor. Right. So how the hell are they going to know if we have a sense of humor? Position, which is, again, another thing they don't really know what they're assessing. But I say that for women, it's not so... Everyone always talks about money. Like, how much more the she's straight dating him because he's rich or he drives a nice car or whatever. It's not that. It's just with position comes money. Well, but they're attracted really, to position. It's really, I mean, pa- it's really power. When they really see, powerful. yeah, when they see a guy up on stage playing his guitar with his shirt off, t- taking command, you know, over over seventeen thousand people, that's power right. for them. Right. That's he, he, he is hold, he's in the limelight. He's holding everyone's attention. And what's number four? We forget intelligence, I guess, huh? Because they separate sense of humor and intelligence. Yeah, they want a smart guy. Yeah. Or, or maybe there's some sort of leadership thing. Yeah. I can't remember. I think they like they like the sort of uh, leadership mm. guy. Like I have some leadership skills, mm. you know, saying, "Look, here's where we're going to eat. It's the best place in town. I know the major d." But I, I will never forget. We were trying to explain that that scale to Roseanne Arnold. Yes, and we were. And Adam goes, uh, "Look at look at Drew and I. We, we're like a, a six or a seven, and but our positions like a you know maybe eight or nine. And they were like, "Oh no, you guys are eight or nine. Your your parents are eight or nine. We're like, "No, no." You're confusing. They they couldn't even separate appearance from position. Yeah, it all gets wrapped together for women sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that's attractive. Right? Roseanne's crazy though. I know, but Anka Radakovich was there too. Remember? She's worse than yeah. Roseanne. Well, but- She's completely insane. <laughs> One of them's, you know, insane. The other one's clinically insane, <laughs> criminally insane. All right. Well, anyway, here's the thing. At 19, you can be a great looking guy, and you barely have anything. I mean, here's here's the deal. A 19-year-old chick is a 9. I mean, I'm sorry. A hot-looking 19-year-old chick's a good 9, 9 and a half. A hot-looking 19-year-old guy is a good 5 and a half or 6. You got no no juice. Now, all you can do is focus on your career. Yeah. All right. But if you beat off frequently, it takes the edge. <laughs> it takes the edge of losing off. You know what I mean? Take some of the sting out of losing constantly. Uh, you, 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 uh, well, you're speaking from experience. So. Thank you. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Doesn't feel like Thursday to me. Feel like Thursday to you, Drew? Feels like Friday to me. Oh, it does? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't have an alternate day that it felt like. It just didn't feel like Thursday. Yeah. Right, I'll give you that. Now, are you ready to roll here? Yeah, let's go. Let's talk to uh, Jen, who's 16. Jen? Hi. Um, my question is, um, before my boyfriend and I have sex, I want to use a condom because I really don't want to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're kind of caught up in the moment, and by the time we get a condom, he's not hard anymore. So is there anything I, I I've decided do? I'm going to come up with a condom loader. It just, it's time. Where a guy can easily get the condom yeah, on it, it, it really, it's an important thing. It needs to be. It, need, it needs to happen. Yeah. It really does. So, well, I, I look at myself like Da Vinci, that all my oh, inventions eventually will come to fruition. By somebody. somebody many, many the, years. But then the I'll be regarded brothers, yeah. as, a, as a bit of a right. pioneer. We'll find, we'll find your sketches of the condom loader. And think, look, he, look. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Jen. Yeah. Uh, you know. What he needs to do is practice with condoms. He needs to masturbate with condoms. He needs to practice putting them on when he's got an erection. Okay. And you need to get on birth control if you guys are going to be sexually active anyway. Not the condoms would be a bad idea. It's a great idea. But 
you know, you guys are sexually active. With- How about that? Okay. He, All right, the get, kid, on, he, get on birth control? Give me two pieces of advice, right? He, he <laughs> what are the two pieces we gave you? Um, he needs to practice, and I need to get on birth control. Now, how there does he go. need to practice? Uh, with a condom, like, masturbating. That's my girl. But here's what he needs to do. He needs to masturbate, stop in the middle, get up, put the condom on, and then finish with the condom on. Okay. That... I, look, everybody, uh, all you do is uh, is sort of train and drill and rehearse your whole life for things that never really end up happening. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You go to school, you have a bunch of... How many fire drills did you participate in? And, you know, when I, a public school, it was the greatest day in the world, those fire <laughs> drill days. It was 12 and a half minutes. I didn't have to sit in class. You get to go file out on a lawn somewhere. But... Always drilling, always training, always what if, always what if, what if, and eh, nine times out of ten, nothing ever happens. But with the condom, the only time a guy ever puts a condom on is when he's had eight wine coolers, he's a little sloppy drunk, he ate hot, half a pot brownie, and he's nervous as hell. It's dark, thing gets flipped over the wrong way, he's having difficulty rolling it on because he's got it on backwards and he's pushing Loader. against it. I'm going to develop it, I swear to God. I am. No, no. Go down to the gay bar, <laughs> grab a handful of condoms, go home, practice popping them on. Mm-hmm. Drill. Okay. Drill for drilling. Steve? Steve. Steve. Yeah. You're 24, what's up? Not much. Um, I'm getting married in a couple of in like eight months, mm-hmm. and me and my uh, fiance are both virgins. That's mm-hmm. nice. Good times. Yeah, Far seen us. Uh, yeah. And, uh, she, uh, I, uh, every time we make out or uh, start, you know, stop making out, I lose it. Mm-hmm. You, you lose, lose your erection? Uh, no, I, uh, I lose your semen. Yes. Your seed, good. your chi. Mm-hmm. So good. even even when you're just kissing. Even when I'm just kissing. And there's no direct stimulation on your dork? <laughs> and none on the dong. No stimulation on the dong, and it just... And, and not only do you, do you leak, but, I mean, you actually just drop your load. Right. There, I oh. mean, there's times when I'm just <laughs> leaking, but there's times when, you know... I know you sound happen. so, uh, what? Well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking about. you got to go to strip clubs. Oh. <laughs> because you could have an orgasm in your pants. Hold on a second. Let me tell you something, Drew. Yeah. Something I wasn't aware of. I, I, strippers have been talking about it for years, but I, I never really believed them. It turns out that a fairly significant number of guys who go to strip clubs have an orgasm in their pants, like during lap dances or maybe even just whatever, watching. You know, like, to me, it was unthinkable. And so it was so many million miles away from my balls I was like, I thought people were kidding, like, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And I started hanging out with guys, started talking to them and stuff, and it's like, yeah, there's about, out of a group of eight guys, there's two and a half of them who bust a nut in the strip club. And I'd even met I, a, I bet it's even higher than that. I met a guy, or, uh-oh. I'm just guessing. Drew's revealing That's never, it never happened, I'm just guessing. Drew got to wear his trough never. socks when he goes there. <laughs> Regular sock just has like a Never kind of happened. a bird bath trough that goes around. It's kind of trumpeted up at the end, so it doesn't trip down his leg and ruin his nice lovers. I knew guys now. There's one guy I used to work with at the Man Show. Three and four orgasms and then, at the strip club, and I'm like, "Why aren't you living there?" Like my thing would be right. like, I'd go in there, drop five hundred bucks, go home, and beat off. Right. You're essentially paying five hundred bucks to beat off. Right. It's not a not a bargain. These guys, it's like being with a prostitute for twenty dollars right. and no uh, no chance of disease. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's the big difference? And actually, better. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, she's naked. She's rubbing up and down. She's on your lap. You have an orgasm. You give her twenty dollars. Slap her in the ass. You go have another drink. All right. Oh my God! What is wrong <laughs> with guys? How can they do this? <laughs> Wait, where are we talking to? Uh, no, Alex? No. Oh, yeah, Steve. Steve. Yes? you got to start hanging out at strip clubs, man. Uh, well, Why are you a virgin? Uh, don't believe in having sex until we're married. Oh, you're Excellent. religious? Yes. You guys been together for a while? Uh, two years. That's nice. It's good. Okay. 
God bless you. Mazel tov. You guys are Jewish, right? Calling from Orange County. Your name's Steve. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Shocking. Okay, so... So uh, I want yeah. to just kind of ask, like, what I can do to... You know, one, it's embarrassing kind of feel like less of a man, but two, what do you do to fix the problem? Well... You keep going. You just... You just you just experiment, you push through. I mean, yeah. it, it's... <laughs> you got to sort of uh, unburden yourself a little more. Yeah. Can you can you beat off, like, no. uh, let's say, during the reception? Uh, <laughs> I don't believe in doing that. Uh, what? Well, you're going to have trouble then. What, how, so you have night emissions, right? What's that? God does it well, for you. Well, listen, he, yeah, look, he just, it, it, his seed just drips down his leg when he gets to second base with her. You wow. Know? What, what's your religion? You gotta be like born again, right? I'm LDS. Yeah. Uh, I'm Do you know what that is? Yeah. Mormon. Latter Day Saints. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. What? Uh, that's even stiffer than the uh, born again Christians, right? Correct. Uh, well, it depends. It's pretty tough, though, right? Yeah. Are right. you Mormon? I am. Uh, and what are you guys into over there? Are you into like the Ark and stuff like that? Uh, we 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 follow the Bible just like it, yeah. just like most Christians. We're very Christian. Yeah. Are you Mormon? What? True. It's Are you a Mormon? That's Anderson screwing yeah, around. Uh, I don't yeah. don't don't listen to him anymore. <laughs> it's, half the time it's funny. The other half is times confusing. Are you a Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew is not flapping his lips. Oh. All right, buddy. Look, you got you can do nothing. Here's the thing: you can't at age. You know, you get married. You're 25 years old. You've never had sex. You don't masturbate, and you want to know. Why aren't you just a Casanova in the sack? Well, here's the thing. You can't have it both ways. And I respect what you're doing and your, what yeah. your wife is doing and all that kind of stuff, and it's fine. But you, you, want, a quick, you want a quick fix. It's like saying, like, it's like, it's like me saying, I'm going to go play some celebrity softball game in Chicago on Sunday, <laughs> which I am going to do. And it's like me going, I don't believe in softball. I don't believe in baseball. I don't believe in exercise. I don't believe in anything. But Sunday, I got to play. So what's up? Where? Give me some tips. Right. It's like, uh, listen, we should have had this conversation in junior high, and you should yeah. have been taking batting practice. You know. But the other thing is, he's he, once he does get married, it's going to put an incredible burden on his wife. I mean, he's he's going to have to unload it all in her. And no, that's no, no be, beating off once you get married. That's not going to work. As a twenty-four she, she, year old she's guy, she's going to be angry and resentful, and he's going to be frustrated. It, it doesn't work. Really? Like, rarely. I mean, rarely. Really? No. Uh, Steve, no beating off once you get married? Uh, she can do it to me, but not not me for myself. Oh, she's yeah. going to be pissed. That seems... <laughs> that seems like... I'm an atheist, but on, on just this sort of foul a meter doesn't that just seem a little weirder, her just giving you kind of compulsory beat off just to take the edge off because she's oh, that's on her period? She's going to get resentful. She's going to be pissed. Honey, uh, I know you're on the rag. You can't pull the plug. Women uh, do not appreciate that quality in men they don't understand it it's like it seems like wh why can't you just hold it why like you know right and what do you, you know, why are you putting me through this that's sort of their orientation <sighs> yeah. hey guys a little love line flashback the yeah. last uh, mormon caller we had a while ago yeah i, I love this let's hear it are you a mormon that's g14 <laughs> that doesn't fall into play are you mormon <laughs> not c14 the lady was going, she was completely insane. Oh, really? I, I thought C-14 was like a cholo gang in uh, L.A. All right. That's good times. Oh, Drew, these retarded religions. What are these people thinking about? It's working. It's working for them. Come on. Yeah, it's working. He's, he's blowing a load in his sock. <laughs> it's working like a charm. Are you kidding? That's a side effect. Like but really, we just got to have, we gotta, people are so stupid, they just got to have something to work. Really, I, it is. Listen, you were. I know it's offensive that when you hear this, you religious people. But come on, what what planet are you living on? Are you guys are you that scared of death? Really, that's all it is. All right, it's ridiculous. And and look, I'm not letting any of the other retarded religions off either. You guys are just as high. I and mean, let's face it, but it's good. It's good. It keeps everyone in line. Works great. So look around the world. See how good. See how good it works with everybody. Jews, Muslims, working, working like a charm. It's all coming in, all falling into place, Drew. Really? Just just how uh, the Lord and Allah, just how they all, just how they all intended it, right? Mm -hmm. Keeping everyone in line. Of course. Uh, a little bit, but just in the name of whatever retarded religion they're backing at this particular time. We'll take a quick break.
We'll be right back. Yeah. All right. It's the love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Drew's getting the yawnies. I'm fine. Yeah. Go home, drink my red wine, watch my TiVo, mellow out, watch <laughs> chips. It's a very, uh, very special chips episode last night. Yeah. Chips comes on about 1 a.m. Watch that whole thing. Yeah. It's so funny. It's like, <laughs> I was watching chips last night. They're driving, uh, they're driving in a, uh, you know, the chip car, Ponch and, uh, Larry Wilcox or somewhere else, but uh, one of the, you know, there's like some sec ancillary guys on chips, the guys who just drive the car and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And one there's a couple of couple of supporting players. One guy's driving with some guy I've never seen before. I'm like, hey, who's this new guy? Five minutes later, he gets run over. He's dead. <laughs> it's like I was like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's I've never why. seen him before. That's why he's dead. Didn't see I that should have known he was gone almost immediately. And it's just. It, the, 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 he, watch these. Uh, go back if you can, everybody. Go on uh, Nick at Night or uh, I don't know TV USA Land. or TV Land or something. Go watch these uh, chips and love bones. They're the mo most ridiculous things ever created. Yeah, the storyline's just bizarre. It's comical. I, 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 this is a I, drama. I thought, I thought the '60s stuff, the I Dream of Jeannie and the Gilligan's Island, all that stuff. Seemed like, was seemed like, like high drama, high like ro Roman farces compared to just horrible schlock. Yeah, in the '70s. No, the the late, but this, but the dramas were bizarre. Yeah, bizarre. Yeah, it's just it's uh, like Fantasy Island. Yeah, Jared, sleep. Jared's asleep. Been on hold for fifty six minutes. Hello, there he is. What's up, yeah. Jared? Here's where you talk. All right. Yeah, my question is, um, what do you guys think the youngest age is to fall in love? Thirty. Thirty. <laughs> well, what? I we haven't talked about love in a long time on this show, <laughs> Drew. Strangely, have we? Strangely enough, it's been it's been uh, we've been so so busy talking about genital mutilation <laughs> and uh, incest that then anal sex. We haven't really talked about love for a long time. All right, let's talk about that. You want to marry your girlfriend? Yeah, at this point I do. You know you're in love. Yeah. How long you been with her? Uh, three months. All right. Uh, well, here's the here's the whole thing. Uh, there's this sort of thing when you're 15, 16 years old, and and sometimes older, that when you're in a relationship, you have to keep, you want to keep progressing. You want to keep making these sort of declarations <laughs> within the relationship. As you get older, you just realize you love me, I love you, we're in a relationship. I don't have to make declarations all the time. We don't have to keep pushing or doing more. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's that weird feeling when you're when you're 15 and you're in love. You're like, I got to do something. Well, that's because so much of that love experience when you're younger is built in fantasy. Mm -hmm. You're projecting and pouring a whole ton of crap into that other person, and just clinging to it with all your might. And while there probably will never be more intense feelings in a relationship. It's not really a love relationship, and it certainly isn't a mature relationship. And you sure as hell better wish that you guys don't get married, because it's all built on sort of. Paul, well, here, here's the thing: you can get married ten years from now, and then it will be fine. But, it but if you get married when you're seventeen, it's BS. But if you cling together and then get married at twenty-seven, it tends not to work that it, it well. It tends not to. And also, here's the other thing. Uh, anyway, define love. Who knows? Who cares? Yeah. It's may I, I'm I'm willing to say it's different for different people. Yep. I think we. No all... one ever really said. No one ever works that angle. Mm. People always talking about oh, you know, caring more about the other person than you care about yourself. Nonsense. Look, here's the thing. There's a you. Hey, you can love your bike when you're eight. Who the hell knows? It's an attachment. It's a very very powerful attachment. Yeah, but look, you know. I've said uh, I've been in love, you know, eight times. You know, I mean, you, you can do it multiple times. Well, that's the other thing. The young people believe this this is it. It's the one. No. And no, no. Yeah. Th that's why I always tell guys, look, if she's holding out for sex and uh, and it, just because she wants to hear you say you love her, go ahead and tell her. You guys going to end up breaking up in six months anyway. Why not? Why bring all that weird tension? Remember you used to do that, Drew? Yeah. Do you love me? 
Uh, I don't love love you. I love the idea of being in love with you, but right now I'm not in in love with you. I love you as a person. It's like, meanwhile, the chick's just getting pissed off, and you're 19 and a half, and you have half a boner, and it's like, ah, I, I should have just said I love you and got gotten on with it, made her feel better. Screw it. What am I fighting it for? We ain't getting married anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so anyway, don't don't get all caught up in that notion, everybody. The technicalities. Yeah, and besides, many people have, uh, have, have, have killed each other because they were too in love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love you too much to live live without you. You know, that BS. Well, the theories are these are actually parts of yourself that you sort of pour into the person and then can't see taken away from you. Okay. But here, here's what we should say to young Jared and all other 15-year-olds that are in a relationship they feel very serious about. That's fine. Good for you. You don't have to get married. You don't have to, you don't have to talk about anything. She's your girlfriend. You're a boyfriend. You guys are in the 10th grade. Maybe the ninth grade. Enjoy. Enjoy. See how you feel when you graduate from high school. Doesn't matter. Thank you. All right. What are you doing? It's doomed. Oh, okay. Uh, Steve. Yeah. You're 25. Yeah. You want to know how uh, weed affects fertility? Right. In in you. Right. I'm a. Uh, I've been listening, you know, the past couple of weeks, and you've been talking about the various types of people that. You think can smoke weed and can't? Yep. So I consider myself one of those guys that can. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm in grad school, uh, doing well, happily married. And uh, no, no, Adam was talking about people that aren't. I, I, I actually pretty much I'm disagree. Sorry, I'm with, sorry, Adam was talking about. Yeah, because yeah. because he, he was talking about the cognitive effects of pot which aren't that bad the the problem is there's some significant mood effects and motivational states and regulatory states of of feelings that become progressively impaired if you're using this drug regularly right and it takes and know, what's variable i'm not feeling it's just what's i see this in my clinical practice every day it's just oh, that's something what i deal meant. with that's what he meant and, and it's it's varying degrees how long that takes to play out sometimes it can take a couple of decades so in the meantime you're sort of fine Okay. Yeah, but how does um, it fe affect your fertility? Right. I uh, I smoke pretty much daily, but but basically uh, maybe like two hits a pot. I treat it kind of, you know, in, yeah. in the evening like a glass of wine or sparingly. Beer. All right, Drew. What about it? It can affect fertility. Yeah, you, but not profoundly, but not it can. really. No. Here's it. Here's the thing. He's not totally smoking out either. I'm thing. no I'm no doctor, but here's uh, here's everything. You can't stand in the way of genetics. If you're if you're meant to crank out a bunch of kids, if you're a fertile person, no man. Uh, look, fifty years of weed, fifty years of booze might make a dent in it. If you got a strong hand going, you got a strong hand going. Uh, if you can't, if you're infertile, it's academic. Yeah. And so, if you're in some sort of category where you're riding a fence and you could really fall on either side of it, then a little puff of weed may knock you on the bad side of that fence. That's uh, the best I can figure. Yep. Then society, doctors, nobody ever talks about that. I guess they just don't want to or they can't figure it out or it's not worth it or we have to scare everybody. But uh, that's really where it is. If, okay. if, you're, if you're healthy and you're fertile and you're 25, you got nothing to worry about. Thank you. Ashley? Yeah. You're 16? Yes. You had sex with your friend a month ago? Yeah. Now he only calls when he wants sex? Yeah. How he old is he? He cares about me, but he's... Sure. He don't ever call me or nothing, but... Yeah. I don't know. You English major, Ashley? <laughs> Do what? All righty. <laughs> now, listen here. You're calling from Tennessee, right? Yes. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I want to be in music business. You want to be in I music? What, yeah. What do you want to do in music? I want to be a singer or something. I don't know. What what do you sing? What do you like? I like rock. You like rock? Mm-hmm. You know any songs? What's your favorite song? Um, I don't know. Evanescence is pretty cool. All right. Can you sing some of that? No, that's okay. <laughs> All righty then. Yeah. All right. You want to be on stage? Here's yeah. a Here's a big audience. Oh, yeah. Right. Hope America watching me. 
She sounded like a delight. Dropping the F bomb. <laughs> and not even in a angry way or a descriptive way, just slid it slid it, it was right a hot, in there. It was a hostile way. It was hostile. Yeah, I guess she is kind of a cooze. Anyway, uh, that, right. he wants you just for sex. That's it. That's reality. He does not care about you any more than that. Maybe as a friend, but he thinks you're also that. Listen, don't lead him to believe you feel like he does. That just that you can't have a relationship that's just sex. If you yeah. have feelings about him, okay. tell him that's happening. And uh, if he's your friend, he'll lay back. Yeah, don't get pregnant. That's and really... don't get a national radio show and use the F word and the S nah. word. That's not so hip. <laughs> Come on. She's going off to Brown, uh, Yale, maybe Cornell. She's down in town. She did that at uh, Vanderbilt. Cornell. Oh, yeah. She's going to Vanderbilt. She's going to Vandy. Take a quick break. We'll be uh, right back. Well, that's the show, everybody. I want to give some thanks where thanks is due. Uh, I got it. First off, what? Just just bang the mic before the show ended. I know. I, 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 I heard you catch it, but I figured out. Oh, geez, we almost made it through a show yeah. without Drew banging the no mic. Way. I want to thank uh, Yes, I Do, but not with you, Brian, for doing a great job. Yeah, can't touch that. You want him. You want him. You look. You don't touch, ladies. Yeah, only he touches. Can't touch this. He touches himself a lot, and he cries. He cries out loud. I want to thank him for doing a great job on the phones and coffee all week. Tara, don't call me Tara, goddammit, who's uh, now just bursting at the seams trying to get her paws on uh, Brian. Again, look, no touched. Doing a great job on the phones, the coffee. I want to thank uh, Junior, 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 <sighs> Junior, 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 Producer Lauren for uh, doing a great job and knowing something about automobiles, which I found out today. Producer Ann for uh, being on top of her game and putting her feminine stink on the show all week long. And, of course, the uh, magic finger one. The potentiometer. Oh, no, wait a minute. The Liberace of the potentiometer. Engineer Anderson. So, until next time, it's Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Are you circumcised? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.